Scotland's controversial not proven verdict is set to be scrapped after years of campaigning by victims of crime. In the Scottish legal system, three possible verdicts are available to jurors at criminal trials, guilty, not guilty and not proven. Changing this unique model is part of a planned new criminal justice bill. Miss M, who's retained her right to anonymity, successfully sued the man who raped her for damages in a civil case after a criminal trial returned a not proven verdict. I've come to the conclusion that I actually would have preferred a not guilty verdict because I would have preferred a verdict that I know the jury would understand, that the onus doesn't feel like it's on me as the rape complainer, um, that the not proven verdict felt like I had done something wrong and the different sort of opinions of what the not proven verdict is and you know means has left me feeling that is it, is it something that I did? You know, I was told during the trial not to come into the courtroom. I didn't have a screen from Stephen Coxon, but I was told not to come into the courtroom because it gives the wrong impression to the jury. So when you're getting told things like this throughout the trial, when it's then gets, you get left with a not proven verdict, I felt, was it something that I did? You know, they keep saying, oh, they believed you, but there's not enough evidence to send, you know, Coxon to prison. For me, I just want to know that a decision has been made and they understand it. Whereas if there's no difference between not proven and not guilty, does it actually matter? With a not guilty verdict, I would have had the confidence that the jury understood the verdict. They deliberated on my future based on something they understood. And frankly, having a not proven verdict just left me questioning, you know, what did I do wrong? Well, Thomas Ross QC is a defence specialist and joins me now. Good evening. Thanks Good very much for being with us. Um, so, uh, some really kind of striking comments from Miss M there. She's clearly had a, uh, a, a, she's thought a lot about this mm. and, and confusion over the meaning of this verdict is, is kind of at the heart of, of, of where she is in this. In your mind, what does not proven mean? It means that the Crown has failed to prove the case beyond reasonable doubt. So does not guilty? That's right. So what's the difference and why do we need both? If there was a logical debate regarding the need for a three-verdict system, then it perhaps I could be persuaded to move towards a two-verdict system. But this has to be recognised for what it is. It's just the latest salvo uh, by the government uh, attacking the freedoms which have been developed over hundreds of years to protect people from the consequences of unfair trials and miscarriages of justice. Are you persuaded at all by what Miss M says, that when she says she would actually rather have seen her attacker acquitted on a not guilty charge? I mean, when it comes to that specific area, to rape cases, a hugely disproportionate number of not proven verdicts, 19% of all rape cases not proven, something like 2% of all cases generally. It, it, criminal trials. But it's not difficult to understand why that is, Martin, because I will regularly conduct murder trials where there are 13, 14 separate sources of evidence, the CCTV, DNA, fingerprints, eyewitnesses. In rape cases, generally speaking, there's one witness. So it would be unsurprising, uh, to, I think, to anybody if the conviction rate was smaller in cases where there was likely to be only one or two sources you, of evidence. Do you think we should we would see a change to the conviction rate if not proven was taken away in rape cases? Well, I think it would be a gamble. Uh, it, uh, uh, there's no reason why there should be any change to the conviction rate because in every single case where a jury has returned a verdict of not proven, the jury has not been convinced that the charge has been proved beyond reasonable doubt. So in the future, presumably, all the not proven verdicts would become not guilty verdicts. Is it satisfactory for anybody not proven? Because it, it, uh, the, the accused walks away with a cloud over them and a stain upon them, like it or not, and the accuser thinks that justice has not been done because that's clearly the message the jury has sent. Is it satisfactory to anybody? Well, the stain argument is one which has persuaded me over the years because undoubtedly people have been hammering away at this idea that if you're acquitted in a not proven verdict then there is some form of stain. It's not true. It simply means that the, the jury were not convinced beyond reasonable doubt that you were guilty. But I can see why that would give a good argument for the whole matter to be considered. But really we're operating in quite a hostile environment at the moment. The SNP tried to take advantage of the COVID crisis by suspending trial by jury. They previously tried to abolish the need for corroboration in criminal trials. It's an all-out attack 
on protections and, and, and don't let forget that even but, with but, all these but protections... But they think it's fair. Let me use... The, we were talking about Ryan Giggs there, right? He's yeah. going for retrial next year. In Scotland, yeah. it may well have been the case that he'd have been found mm. not proven. Unsatisfactory for everybody. At least there's another go for the criminal justice system to see justice done in his case, either way. Yeah, and we, we can look forward to many more cases like Ryan Giggs in Scotland because the benefit of the three verdict system is we only ever have one trial. Now, if they abolish the not proven verdict, they will have to move away from a system where you can be convicted on an 8-7 majority, perhaps to the English system where they need 12 of the 15 jurors before they can be convicted. Any and if they don't making those changes? Well, they have to. They, they simply have to because we're the only country in the world that allows somebody to be sent to custody for the rest of their life on the basis of a simple majority of one vote. Nobody else does it. All right. Well, that was. It, it certainly seems to be their intention. We'll be talking more about this, I'm sure. Thomas Ross, QC, thank you very much indeed. All right. You are watching the.